So when I was approached for a sponsor video for Biomutant, I was a little taken aback because this game was announced as coming to Switch a long time ago and has released on other platforms. In fact, I'll tell you right now, it's available right now on Switch and PC, PlayStation, Xbox. But I never actually played this game on other systems because I was just eagerly waiting for the Nintendo Switch version. And look, whenever you get a Switch version of a game, the biggest thing for me is, does it hold up from a gameplay perspective? You already know, yeah, if you want a better looking version, go play it on another platform. But is it a viable game? Does it run well? Does it play well? And are the systems of the game just fun to do? Because you guys know, as a Nintendo gamer, we like the gameplay above all else, although the other things matter as well. And Biomutant, for a game that I've never played before, really took me for a surprise. Now, I knew it was an RPG, but I didn't understand the depth of the mechanics that I was about to get into here. Yeah, you have your character creation, and sure, the story is told in this very interesting way. You have this little bug this little grasshopper who's your companion who you find out later I don't want to spoil the story for some of you guys but you find out later why that thing is your companion but it also is the narrator of the entire story so like all the characters are speaking this language and they do have audible sounds coming out of their mouth but then it's translated to the player through this little bug you have a pretty neat and a nifty way of, of storytelling that I really enjoyed, but the game really took me for a lot of surprises, so much so that even after I complete this video, I'm going to continue to keep playing this game, and I think I might even try to 100% it if that's even possible, which it probably is, but because of the unique way in which you can craft gear and craft weapons and the unique combat system and the way in which you can customize your character and how you choose your stats as you level up, it really gives to this interesting perspective where I don't know that 100% in the game is possible. But what I do know is that it is a hell of a lot of fun and you can pretty much play your Whoa. way. So what do I really, really mean? Well, the, when you're playing this game, you start out, you create your character, and you get thrown into this world, and you don't really know what's going on. The story is told to you through various different NPCs and events and quests that you end up solving, but then also these flashback scenes to your childhood. This is especially really early in the game. There's a number of flashback scenes that Man, it, it really kind of tugged at your heartstring because once you start connecting the dots together, you start to understand the totality of what's going on because everything it seems to be based around this world tree that you helped nurture when you were younger. And the thing is, the world tree, you're told very early on, if the world tree dies, you die too. Pretty scary considering that there's these things called the world eaters that are out there destroying the roots of the tree. So you can kind of see where you're going here where the idea is to stop all the different world eaters, save the tree, restore balance. Uh, there is a lot of biochemistry and mutant stuff going on from chemical spills. And there, there's some really fascinating stuff. But with your character, you can choose a lot of different types of combat systems. So I ended up choosing, you know, because you have like classes and stuff you can choose. I ended up choosing like this mage style class. But even with choosing that mage style class, you still have access access to pretty much everything. It just sort of affects your initial stats. So as an example, I have the ability to fire like lightning bolts and stuff from a distance, but then I can also get up close and do melee combat with custom weapons that you can either build or just simply find in the world. And I find that just to be very, very, very fun to do. Experimenting with all this stuff. Heck, there's even technically a gun that you can shoot, and you can custom craft and modify that weapon as well. And what you what you end up doing while you're doing this is you are exploring the world, and you're opening up chests, and you can scrap items. So you can, like, say you find a metal pipe in a chest. Well, you can decide if you want to keep that pipe and use it as some sort of attachment, or you can scrap it and turn it into some other material that you could use for other purposes. You could also obviously sell these items at vendors, get money, buy other stuff, buy other attachments. It, it's a really unique system because when I started playing this game, and from my entire understanding of Biomutant over the years, I didn't realize the depth the systems have. Like... 
every time you level up, you get to choose where your stats go in your tree. So even if you chose, like I did, a more mage, a more range type thing, you can end up just piling everything into the melee ability and go with a more melee approach attempt that just happens to have some magic abilities. You also can discover these bio mutant uh, you know, these little green bio things that are in the world that give you points, bio points, that you can use to spend those bio points to improve and gain new abilities. In fact, there's multiple systems at play where you get multiple different types of points that you can use to buy different abilities, whether it's melee abilities, ranged abilities, gun attacks, magic. There's a lot of really interesting and intricate ways in which you can customize your character for certain things. You can even buy certain things like increasing your critical rate or increasing your defense or your dodge ability. It's very fascinating the number of ways in which you can truly customize your experience to your gameplay style and look the game is is just way bigger than i anticipated it to be i'm only i only have about half of the map unlocked and, and the funny thing is uh, i was told that they wanted me to show off flying mounts you know like gliders and, and stuff that i have seen footage of i know are in the game i haven't even found one yet because there's so much to find uh one of the first mounts you'll probably encounter is very early in the game you might not even realize it's a mount because it's not like the game tells you that you can mount things. That's one of the cool things is the game balances telling you cool things you can do versus you just naturally discovering. So at one point I had to like grab this nut and yes, a literal nut and present it to this animal. And all of a sudden I could now mount that animal and ride it around the overworld, which obviously made travel uh, in this pretty open space. I, I would argue it's probably an open world once everything's unlocked just a lot more manageable and there's so many side quests there's so many uh you know different paths you can go down there's also this tribe system the tribe system is really fascinating because once you complete certain tasks for the tribe you can gain access to a special weapon uh, as an example i went with the myriad tribe so i have uh, a boomerang right now but if i went with a different tribe i could get a completely different weapon and you can change your tribes in each playthrough and, and and end up you know what i'm tired of this tribe let me go to the other tribe and do the things they want me to do uh and it's all sort of I haven't figured out the overall purpose yet, and I'm sure this is going to become clear later in the game, but there's also this good versus evil thing going on where there's a lot of decisions you make in the game. So you'll be asked a number of questions, and the answers you give will decide if you are leaning more towards the light or more towards the dark. And there's this sort of angel versus demon uh, little beings that pop up and tell these jokes and sort of attack each other, and it's kind of hilarious. I haven't figured out yet what this changes uh it, it seems to be inferring to me or implying to me that later in the game there's going to be because of the choices you made it's going to affect the end of the game uh, or it's going to affect how your character is formed the light versus darkness they introduce this mechanic to you literally right away in the tutorial area and i i still i'm not sure what happens but what i do know is i like to be a bit of a good boy so i've been making a lot of light choices i have something like 10 10 little points into the light thing and like one into the dark because one of the uh decisions they gave me i wasn't wasn't sure which was the right choice and, and that's sort of a conundrum even when you're trying to be you know so you're trying to be an evil person or you're trying to be a good person you're the, some of the choices they present you it's not 100 percent clear what the correct answer is to get what you want because there's a lot of gray in the world when you're talking about the decision making and the way in which it wants you to progress with certain story elements and side quests the answer isn't 100 percent clear on what the correct way to go is like do you want to take these squirrels and make them cannonballs uh and do you want to keep them alive to do that but then they might die on impact when you shoot them or do you want to kill them now because it makes them easier to carry or do you just not want to use them at all I don't know because you're trying to do what you need to do to progress and beat these world eaters that are just these massive beings. Uh, I, I took down one that honestly, look, uh, just to be clear, I played this game on normal difficulty and I still was dying a number of times. Not so much to the standard ground enemies, but there's all these boss enemies, these boss type 
things that you'll fight all over. And man, they presented quite a challenge because you really have to figure out the best combination of dodging because they do have this dodge system where you have to time your dodge. If you've ever played something like the Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom games, which I'm very familiar with, but in Breath of the Wild, do you remember how you have to time your shield bash whenever a guardian would shoot a laser at you if you wanted to deflect it? Well, the dodge system is very much the same here. You have to time your dodge or it fails and you'll obviously just take damage. Uh, and so it's got a timing dodge system, which I find very fascinating. If you want to dodge hit, dodge hit. Uh, if you want to go full melee, if you want to back off, um, I talked a lot about how like the game really surprised me because of how deep the mechanics are and some of the mechanics they have it also involve crafting and crafting to me is, is, is really cool and I'm still trying to fully understand it because you, you make these weapons and I made a couple of them and they're a combination of scrap uh, which you can use to boost certain different things and a combination of actual pieces and components to make these unique crazy weapons and they seem to get as crazy as you want whether you're making a, a melee weapon or a gun they seem to get awfully crazy i have looked online and seen some insane builds people have done man i'm trying to wrap my mind around how they're doing it because oh my gosh the game has so many little minor complexities to it uh, that i just find utterly just amazing you can even make like custom helmets uh and custom customize your clothing to add certain abilities increase your armor increase your strength critical chance uh damage done damage reduced it, 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 the, the amount of your agility how fast you move the, the, the amount of customization here honestly you know i brought up zelda earlier it makes zelda sort of look like a uh what what is it a fisher price game in comparison when you're just talking about the 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 massive customizations uh, biomutant and well here's the thing too because one thing we talk about this being available on all platforms absolutely play it on the platform of your choice it does run well on switch as well that was one of the things that i was really paying attention to while playing like how playable is this experience? Is there gonna be a lot of frame rate hitches? Is it gonna have a lot of issues? And I'm happy to report that again, it's a very playable experience. You know, if you thought Hogwarts Legacy was playable, this game has significantly less frame rate issues than that one. Uh, not to put that game down, I actually really enjoy Hogwarts Legacy on Switch, but it does have a lot of frame rate hitches that I'm not seeing here in Biomutant so far. And I've been in some pretty intense battles. Uh, it, it visually has a lot of dive Diverse environments as well I spent a lot of time in forest areas but there's other areas as well you know with rundown buildings and stuff honestly I'm very impressed with this game bio mutant to me is an unsung RPG that deserves more attention and I've never been more thrilled to make a sponsored video before because normally you get your sponsorships and you do your thing and they tell you what to say they didn't really tell me anything they said just play the game say what you think i think biomutant might be a must own game and you can now get it on literally every platform thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much to the developers and the sponsors over at biomutant and we'll catch you in the next video